last few days I've been getting in my feed on YouTube some really ridiculous claims concerning this Jade Helm thing. And um, I gotta tell you, man, if people don't know what they're talking about, they just need to shut their mouths. Because obviously they didn't take the time to do the research. They haven't had any real experience in the military. And uh, quite frankly, they don't understand what the job of special operations is. And specifically, Green Berets. Now, <clears throat> I got a little bit of an edge when it comes to knowing about this stuff because I was practically raised by special forces guys even before I got out of high school and went in the military. And these guys were Vietnam vets, um, and their whole demeanor and personality was nothing like what is being described. Um, and so, everyone who's all up in arms and getting all flustered about Jade Helm, you guys really don't understand what the mentality of Green Berets is. I'm here to tell you. When, uh, when I was still just a kid, um, that was how I got some of my firearms experience, was actually getting hands-on training with, uh, back then it was known as a CAR-15, and uh, so I was familiar with that weapon even before I went in the military. Um, and the guy that, um, I'll just call him my godfather, um, he used to bring me and my brother all kinds of training manuals, gear, everything. And would encourage us to go out and practice some of these techniques and survival training and whatnot. And this is back in the 80s. This is back when um, the militia movement was pretty big, you know, um, and growing. And uh, before the 90s where they kind of got shut down. But, uh, you know, they were very supportive of that back then. I'm not so sure now because um, I haven't really seen any special ops guys involved in that personally. But I do know that they would be willing to support um, people if they indeed needed to defend themselves against the tyrannical government. So, um, as far as this charge of them kicking in doors and setting up armed checkpoints, you know, and, and uh, imposing martial law. It just, that would not happen. I think it's a, a stretch to say that they would do that. But what is Jade Helm anyway? Well, um, like the presentation stated and the audio stated, um, it's basically a homecoming for the Green Berets. Because the last couple of wars, they've been misused, and they know it, and they know that their mission changed, and they didn't agree with it. Matter of fact, that's probably why a lot of them quit and became contractors, was because they could get paid more to do something they actually enjoyed, rather than um, being misused all the time. You see, because their mission is not to go in and kick doors down all the time. Sure they do that. They do snatch and grabs. Like, uh, they'll rescue people or they'll um, capture a guy. You know, a high-profile prisoner or something. They'll capture him and take him in for questioning or whatnot. But uh, their main objective and their main mission is actually living with an indigenous people and doing boring stuff like... Uh, Let's say they needed to dig an irrigation ditch or dig a well, you know, give a town running water, help them plant their rice for the season or something, you know, things like that. They'd have to endure really terrible food that they're not used to eating, you know. In some cases, it's decent food, but in other cases, it's horrible food. And still smile and get a good rapport for months and months and months on end before they can even get a foot in the door to really um, train these people or 
get them to go along with whatever overall mission is going on in that country. And uh, so that's 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 the job of special forces. Um, you know, I think too many people get their job confused with other things because they've seen the uniform that they were wearing in Afghanistan and Iraq and they equate that uniform with special forces no matter what branch they're in they automatically look at them and say oh those guys gotta be operators you know they look at the police officers wearing green and oh those guys gotta be special forces operators no there are lines being blurred I'll admit that you know the police are being militarized and things like that but you gotta know what you're looking at and for the most part, special ops guys are not going to be um, high profile. You know, especially like Delta and Green Berets. They're more background. They don't want to be in the spotlight. They want to blend in. They would rather sneak into a place and sneak back out without being known that they're there. They're not going to go kicking doors in. They're not going to go taking your firearms. It's just not something they do. Um, now, Jade Helm itself, why did they call it Jade Helm? Well, the naming convention in the military is always for a reason. So, when you say Jade Helm, and you look at the mission statement, the scenario that they're putting forth, is one where the southwestern United States has been taken over by a hostile entity, most likely China. And their mission is to support an insurgency against the Chinese. Now, that's all well and good for a scenario in wargaming and, and training. But, this also indicates a real world exercise in the future. And what do I mean by that? Well, right now, in fact, the last couple of years or more, the CIA along with the Turks um, have been recruiting the Uyghurs in northwestern China um, to recruit insurance. And uh, so what they're trying to do is create instability in China because there's, there's some real shady stuff going on. And I don't agree with that mission. And I think the special forces are being prepared for that mission to go be embedded with the Uyghurs and gain their trust and train them as an insurgent force uh, in northwestern China. And I totally disagree with that. But um, that's, that's pretty much why they would name it that. So you can definitely see some Pentagon influence there. But um, this, this is not martial law. It's, it's just not. Um, they, they just wouldn't do that. The video that people keep pointing me to, it's kind of got me upset, and it just appalls me that, once again, people don't know what they're looking at when they see these videos, is one where the FBI either got a false lead, you know, and they went in to raid somebody and kind of got let down and came back to their vans and helicopters and left, or they actually were practicing an exercise in Fort Lauderdale, Florida to qualify for night operations. And that's not unusual. That's happened in other cities. It may not have been publicized because it was at a different time. But now because it's so close to Jade Helm, people automatically assume that it's been, been sponsored by special operations. They assume because they see Black Hawk helicopters, it has to be military. I'm here to tell you. FBI has Blackhawks, they got OH-58s, OH-60s. They have military-style helicopters, but they're painted black and they got police on the side of them. You may not see that in low light, but if they did that in the daytime, you'd be like, oh yeah, that's FBI, or that's uh, SRT, or SWAT team, or something. And people got to do their homework, because nowhere in the mission planning did it state that they were going to be in Fort Lauderdale. No, they were going to be in the Panhandle. That's further west. That's nowhere near Fort Lauderdale. So, do your homework. 
before you start spouting off about what's going on. Because nine times out of ten, it's not what you think. Believe half of what you see and none of what you hear. And know what you're talking about. If you really want an inside track on what Special Forces does, historically, and why this operation is a good idea for them to do, it's because they've gotten off track. Because they had some bad command elements and decisions that these guys were forced into a role that they're not supposed to be in. You know? So, um, you know, now could there be a PSYOP there? Yeah, there could be. There's going to be other exercises going on in conjunction with that. And I guarantee people are going to say, see, see, it's special ops guys. No, you're never going to see the special ops guys. They're going to blend in your background as well as they can. You're not even going to notice it there. But there are going to be other units showboating. MPs is one of them. Um, and probably some other units, too, that are going to be showboating. But um, you're just not going to see the special ops guys very much. And, uh, yeah, it, I, I, I just don't see it. I do not see it. Um, as far as PSYOPs go, too, there is a PSYOP going on. And the so-called alternative media, like Alex Jones and some other news channels, what they're doing is they're actually facilitating a PSYOP that's driving a wedge between the civilian population and the military and special forces right now. And that's dangerous because these are the very same people that would be willing to help you out if you indeed had to protect yourself against a tyrannical government. So bad mouthing them is not a good idea because rather than help you they'd turn their backs on you if you're just going to bad mouth them and they don't know what you're going to do who knows we may get some yahoos that decide because they see some guy who's a special ops guy and they've heard that they're going to impose martial law they might start shooting them and don't expect them to not shoot back because they have every right to defend themselves too so, yeah, uh, like I said, if there's a PSYOP going on, it's people like Alex Jones, you know, that live off of fear porn. They make their living off of it. Don't listen to them. Do your homework. Don't just go off on a tangent and jump to conclusions because that's the last thing we need. If things are already bad enough, and it, it has been tried the last several months to drive a wedge between the civilian population, the military, the civilian population, the police. You know, instead of worrying about all that stuff, recognize that we're all going to have to work together to get anything done. Whether it's to avert a conflict or once one happens, we're probably going to end up working with each other anyway.